Hi, my name is Alyssa Espen. I'm a weed science research associate with Dr. Mark Laux at Ohio State. And today I'll be talking about cover crops for weed control, specifically the area of cover crop termination. Cover crops are planted for a number of reasons, and many times growers get into cover crops for the purposes of soil health. Cover crops can protect soil against the elements, and particularly the extreme weather events that have been increasing in recent years. Cover crops can reduce nutrient losses following cash crops, build organic matter levels in the soil, increase the infiltration of water into the soil profile, and most notably for our work and a lot of what I'll be covering in this series is the suppression of weeds provided by cover crops. Once you have successfully selected a species based on cover cropping goals and established the cover crop, it's then time to terminate if your species overwinters. Cover crop termination is critical to ensure that they do not compete with the following cash crop. It's very important to use the right method of termination at the right time, and this is critical to ensure timely planting and prevent any competitive effects. The three main methods of cover crop termination are natural, chemical, and mechanical. Depending on species selection and goals, cover crops can also be baled, grazed, or harvested as silage. There are some important considerations to take into account when planning termination method and timing. First, it's critical to base termination off of cover crop species. Most decisions made in the management of cover crops always go back to species selection. It's also important to know the stage at which the species needs to be controlled, how to identify it, as well as how weather might impact termination, and always the cover cropping goals. These decisions require a balance between growing the cover long enough to maximize benefits of the cover in terms of weed suppression, and terminating in a timely manner in order to prevent any penalties to the following cash crop. Natural termination is planting summer and fall cover crops that die naturally over the winter. In Ohio, these species include oats, sorghum sedan grass, tillage radishes, turnips, and winter peas in a deep freeze. This method is sometimes preferred by growers as it can simplify spring management. However, the use of these species tends to provide a shorter period of soil protection, especially if planted after a late harvest. For this reason, species are often included in some sort of species mixture with others that can survive the winter. Chemical termination, or the use of herbicides to kill a cover crop, is probably the most common method in Ohio. It's extremely reliable and can be implemented easily as herbicides are often applied in the spring anyway for a burn down. It's important to use the right herbicide at the right rate for the right cover crop growth stage. Several studies have shown that glyphosate or mixes that include glyphosate are often the most effective at terminating a cover crop, especially our grass species such as wheat, barley, rye, oats, and annual ryegrass. We see excellent control with this method when applied before or at the boot stage in grasses. Termination is most effective when applied on warm, sunny days when the plants are actively growing and taking up that herbicide. It's also commonly recommended that cover crops before corn be terminated 10 to 14 days in advance in order to minimize any competitive effects. Other non-selective herbicides such as Paraquat and glufosinate can also be used and are especially effective on legume species such as Austrian pea, crimson clover, and hairy vetch. These herbicides are beneficial in cool, wet springs, but the key to effective use of these herbicides is complete coverage and often including other herbicides to maximize effectiveness. A few studies have shown that the addition of 2,4-D or dicamba in applications of glyphosate, paraquat, or glufosinate provides the most complete control of broadleaf cover crops. In termination applications, it's important to watch out for antagonism. Applications that include both glyphosate and glufosinate can cause antagonism, meaning there can be reduced effectiveness when applied together. Glyphosate and growth regulators applied together have reduced effectiveness on termination of grasses, and we've seen this effect in some of our studies. When applying these herbicides, residuals can be included to reduce additional field passes. These can be included in either the pre-plant or post-termination application to provide residual weed control into the growing season. It's important to know that biomass levels of the cover crop can impact the amount of residual product that actually reaches the soil. So now I'll review some of the specific termination recommendations for some of the most popular cover crop species in Ohio. Cereal rye is generally easy to terminate, which is one of the many benefits of using rye as a cover crop. Glyphosate effectively controls rye up to 18 inches at a rate of 0.75 pounds acid equivalent per acre, and rates should be increased on taller rye and know that there can be some antagonism with some residual herbicides. Gramoxone can also be effective on rye, and even more so when applied with atrazine or 28. Winter wheat can be a little tougher to kill than rye, as it has more issues with antagonism, weather, and rate. Like rye, it's recommended to use glyphosate on wheat up to 18 inches, but to increase the rate to 1.1 to 1.5 pounds acid equivalent per acre, especially on taller wheat, and note that possible antagonism with certain residual herbicides is a possibility. 
It's most effective when applied alone in water and when plants are small. Ramoxone is not typically a, an effective termination option with wheat. Annual ryegrass used as a cover crop is generally a concern as it has shown to be more difficult to control with chemical termination. For this reason, it should be less than six inches tall at the time of termination, limiting the amount of biomass that's able to accumulate. Control with glyphosate is better in warm weather and should be applied at a minimum of 1.5 pounds acid equivalent per acre or higher for large plants or in cold weather. Termination of annual ryegrass with gramoxone is variable and possibly comes with a higher cost. Hairy vetch and winter pea are fairly easy to kill, especially larger vetch plants. As mentioned, control of broadleafs with a combination of glyphosate and 2,4-D or dicamba is most effective. Gramoxone can be effective with 2,4-D or atrazine on larger vetch. Clovers and alfalfa, on the other hand, are not necessarily easy to kill. Glyphosate plus 2,4-D or dicamba is most effective at a rate of 1.1 to 1.5 pounds acid equivalent per acre. Clopyrrolid is an effective option for control of clover and alfalfa, whereas gramoxone is generally not a good choice. Larger crimson clover can be terminated with 2,4-D. The third method of cover crop termination is mechanical. Tillage is capable of breaking up residue and incorporating it into the soil. Some growers just feel more comfortable seeing less biomass on the field at the time of planting. Field cultivators are effective at cutting up roots and burying residue. Strip tillage breaks up residue where the cash crop will be planted and increases soil warming in the row. It's often combined with other forms of mechanical termination like roller crimping, which will be discussed a little later. Vertical tillage is another option, but typically less effective at terminating the crops. It's important to note that many of these types of tillage may require multiple passes in order to achieve adequate termination. In general, the use of tillage to terminate cover crops can negate some of the benefits associated with cover cropping. For this reason, it's important to consider your cover cropping goals when planning termination method. Roller crimping is another method of mechanical termination that uses a heavy, often water-filled drum to flatten and kill cover crop species. It can be used on a number of species, but it must be performed at the right growth stage. Cereal rye should be rolled after pollen shed to effectively terminate. Rolled rye forms a dense mat of residue that is capable of choking out weeds and conserving soil moisture into the growing season. Hairy vetch should be rolled in full bloom and is often a good option before corn. This termination method is especially suitable to organic production where chemical termination is not an option. It is complicated by the use of species mixtures which are increasing in popularity and when rolling these multiple species mixes it's best to base timing off of the latest maturing species. Mowing is another form of mechanical termination and is generally less effective than tilling or rolling. There's concern about regrowth of these species, uh, but it may be an option for growers looking to minimize biomass at the time of planting. When planting cover crop termination, it's important to consider all the factors discussed, such as species mixture, growth stage, method, and cover cropping goals. It's also important to discuss plans with your crop insurance agent to make sure you are within the requirements of your policy. Some great resources for more information on cover crops for weed control, I suggest looking into the 2020 Weed Control Guide, the Ohio Agronomy Guide, and especially the Managing Cover Crops Profitably publication out of SARE. This has more great information on the different methods of cover crop termination by species. If you have questions about managing cover crops for the purposes of weed control, feel free to email Dr. Lox or myself and visit our webpage. We can also be reached through our social media accounts on Twitter or Facebook and I encourage you to visit our YouTube page for all sorts of great weed science content.